Hi everyone, my name is Erica Postuma and I am a high school chemistry teacher in Indiana using modeling instruction. I have been teaching since 2001 and I've been using modeling instruction since 2011. Today I want to share with you one of my favorite activities to do on the first day of school. One of the most important components to a successful modeling classroom is the classroom culture. Modeling teachers need to build a kind of classroom environment where students respect the process of investigation and understand that the process of learning science is as important as arriving at the correct answer. We always want our students to see value in learning from each other and to recognize that it's okay not to have the best answer the very first time you try something. In an attempt to instill these ideas from the first day of class, I have my students build boats on day one. The goals for this activity are pretty simple. I want my students to be engaged, to be active, and to be able to collaborate. And I want them to be thinking and problem solving together. Um, and I think that this is going to be an especially important activity for this year. It's been quite a while since most of my students have had any chance to do any hands-on learning. I begin with an overview of the challenge and I provide the guidelines they need to follow while they're constructing their boat. These guidelines are quite simple and they can be adapted to your individual classroom needs. Essentially, I just tell the students, hey, I need you to build a boat. These instructions are pretty vague and that's by choice. I simply tell the students they are going to build a boat that's capable of floating as many pennies as possible. They can use any of the materials I've provided to them. They need to keep track of how much they take and how much each item costs. And then they have to make sure that their boat meets the time and size regulations that I've set forward. They also need to see this ratio. Um, we're going to do a float off contest at the end of the building and the students groups with the lowest cost to number of penny ratio will be declared the winner. And then I give them this price list. And this price list can vary depending on what you have available in your classroom. Um, mine changes a little bit every year, but uh, the prices that are listed, I will display during the building process so that the students can reference it and look back and um, keep track as they go. After I describe the activity that we're going to do, some students are a little apprehensive to get started. They've never had to do anything like this. And they also don't always see the connection between building these boats and what that has to do with chemistry. But eventually, um, the students will get started and they'll get pretty excited about building their boats. And then once the time um, for building is over, then we will all come together and each group will have the chance to set their boat into the water basin and they will choose someone from their group to carefully place the pennies onto the boat. And the rest of their classmates will come around and we will count out loud and we'll help them keep track. And we are cheering each other on. And the other groups that are watching are also kind of strategizing. You know, they're seeing what this group does and how well their boat performs and how they're placing their pennies. And so they're keeping track because they're going to use that um, the information that they're gathering when they're starting to place the pennies on their own boats. At the end of the float off, the students will present their results on their whiteboards. So they must show how they calculated their score, how they calculated their total cost, and how they calculated their ratio. And generally, we'll have some heated discussion over the need for some set of rules that would help determine how, and how to round and what to round and how many numbers they should keep in their calculations. At the end of the activity, after all of the whiteboards have been presented and the winners have been declared, I will ask the question, how many of you built the best boat possible? And no one raises their hand. Even the group that was declared the winner, they're pretty sure they're gonna be able to build a better boat. So then I'll ask them, how many of you could build a better boat now that you've tested yours and that you've seen other people test their boats? And everyone in the class will raise their hand. That's when I have the discussion about what we're going to do in this classroom. So why did I do this activity? Well, in a modeling classroom, students learn from each other. And so when we built the boats and we all watched everybody test their boats, we got, we got better ideas. We learned from what we saw. We saw what was successful and what was not and what was very expensive to use and what were the alternatives? Like what was the best way to get the best score? So just like in this boat building contest, we constructed models, we tested them, and we learned how we could improve upon them. So 
in this classroom this year, we're going to do just that. We're going to build models. We're going to propose ideas, but then we're going to test those models and we're going to keep testing them until they fail. Everybody's boat failed today because everybody's boat sank. We're going to keep testing these models until we break them. And we're going to use that information that we get from breaking these boats and from breaking these models. We're going to use that and we're going to make a better model. We're going to see how this model failed and how we can use that to make a better model. It's a really nice way to introduce how we're going to learn in this class. It's very different from any of my students' prior experiences. And it's a nice way to set up the rest of the year. We constantly reference this throughout the rest of the year. And we'll be like, I'll say, well, we're going to build better boats today. And the kids all know what that means. One fun extension I've done with this activity before is I've collaborated with teachers in other states. And I did that through using ChemEdX. So ChemEdX is a free online resource for uh, chemistry teachers. Um, it's chemedx.org. And there will be a, a link to an article in ChemEdX about this very activity. So I used ChemEdX and Twitter, and I collaborated with some teachers from all over the country. We used the hashtag build a boat to kind of share back and forth what our students did. And um, each of the teachers that participated um, submitted their students' best scores and pictures of their boats so we could see each other's work. Thanks for watching, and there will be links to the, all the materials and this presentation in the show notes.